so hello uh, welcome to the another episode of the uh, sales force interview questions and answer question process here are the top 15 question uh, that might be asked or uh, are asked in the past in the Infosys company's interviews so let's look at them one by one first is what is batch apex so batch apex is a powerful technique in salesforce that allows developer to efficiently process large volume of data in asynchronously it breaks down the processing into manageable chunks typically of 2000 to 50000 records at a time to prevent overloading the platform and ensure smooth execution uh, let's imagine real world scenario imagine you have a salesforce organization with a uh, 1 lakh record custom records and you need to update a specific field like a loyalty program tire based on their purchase history processing all one lakh record at a once could be time consuming and resource initiative so with the help of the batch apex which you which you can divide this whole transaction into a smaller chunks and provide specific governor limits to each transit each chunks of that particular transaction second is what are the challenges that you faced while incident issues so here are the top six first is difficult to customize second is user permission third is compromised data integrity link to support issue fourth is lack of uh, usable reports and dashboard and fifth is poor user adoption Okay, another important question is what is the e-state dot test and e-test dot stop. So, e-test is a start and e-test dot stop. Our method uses specifically within the Apex test classes to manage governor limits and asynchronous behavior during testing. They are not part of general Salesforce functionality and are only relevant in the context of using testing. So, e-test dot start that purpose marks the beginner of the actual test execution within your test method and what is the benefit reset is governor limit provide a fresh set of governor limits for your users test allowing you to test scenario with large data place large database or more resource initiative operation without exceeding platform limitation and is dot stop test which is uh, purpose single the end of actual test execution within your test method uh, the important importance of this is that it restores original limit revert the governor limit back to their original value preventing them from impacting subsequent test uh, in trigger asynchronous process uh, focuses all async method queued up during the test between is test dot start and each test dot stop to run async before the test method completes this ensures your assertion can evaluate the effect of asynchronous operations interface in batch apex so database dot batchable this is the interface provide a contact between your custom batch apex class and the salesforce platform is this catches how your class instance with the system during batch processes here's a breakdown of this method uh, first is start which is database.query locator query then execute database.batch as object record and in the finish database.batch as object record which is optional you can also write debug into the last one why we need to use test class in salesforce uh, catching bugs early imagine you are building custom features in salesforce to automate leads in scoring without test class a bug might lurk undetected until it causes issue for the real user potentially leading inaccurate lead scores and missed opportunities test classes allows you to simulate your various scenarios example different lead data edge cases and identify these box before they reach production saving time and frustration second is prevent regression let's say you need to modify the lead scoring logic 
test classes act as a safety net they help ensure that your changes haven't unintentionally broken other part of the sport by running the test after modification you can catch any regression and fix them before deploying the update code meeting deployment requirement salesforce enforces a minimum code coverage uh, threshold usually which is 75 percent for deployment test classes contributes to achieving this by simulating different scenarios and executing the various code path this ensures a baseline level of testing has been done before pushing code live and last is building confidence without through the test classes developer gain cons uh, confidence in the code robusting they know it has been securized under version con conditions businesses also benefit from the confidence knowing their customization have been regressively tested what is system dot run as so system dot run as is a method specifically used within the apex test class it allows you to temporarily switch the execution context to different user during your test is this is the particularly helpful for testing scenarios that involve record sharing rules or used permission based so previous previous experience what is your role that depends on your experience like how you can uh, brief your uh, past expression like uh, what kind of projects you are uh, you are and you were running uh, in your company and what kind of your role you are applying for that depends completely on so make your own answer for the same question if that asked and this is the very most important question that can be asked in every second interview so please be prepared with your own answer scripted based on your self preparation eighth is explain how we can create lightning flow to send an email to customer so prerequisites access to salesforce org with the lightning flow builder should be enabled this would be the first step you need to take care of second is a basic understanding of salesforce object and field an existing email template containing the desired email content and layout uh, step is google how many records can be batch run maximum batch size for the apex batch processes is 2000 record what is the custom label in the sales force again uh, this question is repeated uh, and can be asked uh, frequently into the interviews of the fresher or experienced developer uh, custom label is a reusable text values that can you that can define and manage centrally these labels can then be referenced throughout your application including uh, user interface label displayed on a button page element error message and other ui component and then is apex class use custom label within your apex code for dynamic content or manage messages uh, then is visual for space and lightning component reference label to display consistent text across your custom pages and components uh, then is formula Level can be incorporated into formulas for calculation or conditional logic that involves text. Mm, and in the practical round, uh, you may ask to write the apex trigger to create a number of record based on the entered values in the number of location field in the account object. This also depends on a scenario based on the interviewer. Uh, what kind of question can be asked? That ask then. It is dependent on the kind of interviewer you will face in your interview. Then is what is Web2 case explained. Web2 case in Salesforce is a feature that simplifies the process of capturing customer support requests directly from your company website and automatically converting them into Salesforce cases. It essentially bridges the gap between your website and your Salesforce service consoles. Uh, here's a break, breakdown that how to how Web2 case works. So a web form creation imagine you are having a website in which you have a simple form and that you need to uh, get created all the entries the users they are putting onto your website's form so salesforce will provide you the 
to customer customize your ui of your particular website and publish them so whenever a user enters uh, different uh, input in your various uh, fields that you are all that you have already provided and when they hit the save button that uh, record with particular information will be stored inside the salesforce that what's that's what the uh, web to case is okay different between profiles and role so uh, purposes of the profile is defined user in, in user per, uh, permissions like crud which is field level and enroll manage data visibility based on the hierarchy uh, and then is access control object field crud levels and record level sharings in the roles functionality of the profiles determine what users can do with the data and functionality of the roles determine whose data user can see what are trigger events before insert after insert before update after update before delete after delete and undelete so before event occurs whenever a record is getting inserted this is used uh, whenever you want to modify uh, whenever you want to modify the same level object and validate some kind of the fields then the before insert will be used and in the event of the after insert the operation will get run after the insertion of the record and in the before update uh, you can use code to prevent invalid updates and force data consistency or automatically updates deleted up records based on the changes in the after update event this event fires after an existing record is successfully updated you can use code here to perform post update task and send alerts or trigger workflows uh, before delete this event fires before an existing record is deleted you can use code to prevent accidental deletion and force data integrity check or achieve related data before the record is permanently removed in the after delete event this event fires after the existing record is successfully deleted you can use code here to perform post delete deletion tasks such as uh, cleaning up related records or update other dependent data and last is on delete this event fires when a previously deleted record is restored so explain sharing rule sharing rule is a in the salesforce are a mechanism to extend data access beyond limitation set by owd for object they allows you to grant read only or read write access to specific users or group based on the predefined criteria so that was the top 15 questions of the interviews of the infosys hope this might find you insightful and hope that it may help you to cracking your next entry thank you so much